Welcome to Our Lady of Lourdes Parish in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Lasanti, and together we're praying the 20th Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And as always, we begin Mass by taking a look into our hearts, examining our lives, and confessing our sins. We are called on to be people of love. For the times we fail to live love as we should, especially within our own families, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We're called on to be courageous in proclaiming to the world that we belong to Jesus. For the times our faith and proclamation has been weak, Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. For the good we intend to do but don't, all those sins of omission, missed opportunities to do the good we should, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting light. Amen. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that the love of God may raise us beyond what we see to the unseen glory of his heavenly kingdom. God, our loving Father, may we love you in all things and above all things. And may we reach the joy you have prepared for us a joy that is beyond our imagining. And we ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Proverbs. Wisdom has built her house. She has set up her seven columns. She has dressed her meat, mixed her wine. Yes, she has spread her table. She has sent out her maidens. She calls from the heights out over the city. Let whoever is simple turn in here. To the one who lacks understanding, she says, Come, eat my food, and drink of the wine I have mixed. Forsake foolishness that you may live. Advance in the way of understanding. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The Lord will hear me and be glad. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Glorify the Lord with me. Let us together extol his name. I sought the Lord and he answered me and delivered me from all my fears. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. Look to him that you may be radiant with joy, and your faces may not blush with shame. When the poor one called out, the Lord heard. And from all his distress he saved him. Taste and see the goodness of the Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, watch carefully how you live, not as foolish persons, but as wise, making the most of the opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not continue in ignorance, but try to understand what is the will of the Lord. And do not get drunk on wine, in which lies debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, 
singing and playing to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks always and for everything. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to God the Father. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. My friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to the crowds, I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. The Jews quarreled among themselves, saying, How can this man give us his flesh to eat? And Jesus said to them, Amen, amen, I say to you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life within you. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise that person up on the last day. For my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in him. Just as the living Father sent me, and I have life because of the Father, so also the one who feeds on me will have life because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven, unlike your ancestors who ate and still died. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. It is great to be back with you and to celebrate Mass after a taking a period of time off this summer to have some surgery and do some healing. And uh, I'll talk more about that experience later on. But as always, you know, I love getting into the readings and they have so much to say to us. So let's begin with that Old Testament reading from Proverbs. We're hearing in the book of Proverbs that God and godly life is rooted in wisdom. That when we find true wisdom, we're finding an insight into the mind and heart and soul of God. And that for us to be godly people, we've got to be people who try to live every day with a sense of being truly, truly wise. But what does that mean? What does it mean to be a person blessed with the gift of wisdom? If we say it's a godly value, how can we demonstrate that value in your life and mine? And I would suggest to you that for all the stories about wisdom in the Bible, and there are plenty of them, I always like to go back to the one that many of us learned even as kids, the story of King Solomon, considered to be the wisest of kings. And of course, the story that's told is about the fact that there were two women who were brought before him, both claiming to be the mom for a particular baby. Now, this is obviously thousands of years ago, long before DNA testing could have told us whose baby really was. So Solomon, being a man of wisdom, being a king of wisdom, didn't know what to do. How do I decide whose child this is? And so he thinks to himself, a true mom would want so badly for her child to live. Let me try this particular test. And so he says to the two women, since I don't know who's really the mother of the child, in fairness, I can't decide. So instead, I will take my sword and cut the baby in half and give you each half a baby instead of giving one baby, uh, giving the baby to one woman and the other having no one. And then one woman stepped forward and said, no. No, if, if that's the choice, if that's the decision you've made, then let this other woman have the baby, but let the baby live. The other mother, who was in fact not truly the mother, said, cutting the baby in half sounds fine to me. Solomon knew in that moment, because he understood the human heart, no true mother would want to see her baby destroyed. 
And so he decides, now I know through the gift of wisdom, the gift that comes from God, I know who the real mother is. And he turns the baby over to the true biological and emotional and loving mother. The one who was willing to give the baby up for adoption to that other woman rather than see the baby die. That insight of Solomon is what wisdom is. The ability not to take things at face value, but to look truly into the human heart. You know how sometimes people say one thing, but they mean another? The gift of wisdom, a godly value, which you and I are supposed to live, sees beyond the surface and understands people down to their core. There are all sorts of people around you and me, many of them in our own families, who we think we know when we box in in a particular way, but if we're willing to see below the surface and see who they really are and look into their hearts, then we come to understand who they truly, truly are. You know, I remember one time, long time ago, in a, a sacramental situation with confession, having a woman come in with an attitude. She was a, an adult woman, but said, when I was 17, I was pregnant, no support. I had to have an abortion and I had it. And I would do the same thing over again because at that time, it was the best decision for my life. Now, on the face of it, I should have said, well, look, if you're not regretful for that decision, I don't know what you're doing in confession, take a hike. But something said to me, wait a second, she's here in confession. She's saying it was perfectly legitimate. She had to do it. She defends it. But why is she here? And I came to see that underneath the surface resistance of admitting that something terrible had happened, that this woman needed to say, this thing happened, and I'm here in confession because I need someone to know that I have lived with this sadness and regret. On the surface, she seemed to be tough and sure of her decision. By the end of our time in confession, she was in tears, admitting that, in fact, it was the worst decision of her life. Sometimes we judge people by the exterior or the way in which they come across. Wisdom, the gift of God, demonstrated by King Solomon, is able to see people as they truly are. So look around you and your family, among your friends, and the neighbor you haven't talked to for years. And realize that to be a godly person is to be a person of wisdom, which is to say that we can see into the human heart and truly understand other people, where they're coming from, why they do what they do, what they really mean to say but sometimes can't. How good are you and I in terms of being able to judge with a heart filled with wisdom the people around us? Okay, let's go to that second reading, uh, St. Paul to the Ephesians. Here I think is the key line. Watch carefully how you live. Watch carefully how you live. I'm going to suggest to you that for a lot of us, myself included, we lead what we'd have to call an unexam unexamined life. We're so busy running around, doing so many things that we never stop to say, why am I doing what I'm doing? Do I ever stop to consider what my real values are? Is the way in which I lead my life demonstrating the heart of my values? Or am I following the crowd? Am I doing what's expected of me instead of doing what I know to be right and true? The unexamined life goes through the motions, runs through every day, keeps busy, busy, busy. Don't we all use that as an excuse? Oh, I'm so busy, you can't believe how full my day is. Who cares? The bigger question is, are you doing what you should be doing with your life? Are you using the time that God gives you and me for good purpose? Are we just going through the motions? We are called on by this reading by St. Paul to take a good, hard look at how am I living my life what am I doing with my time? What are my values? And are they being clearly demonstrated by the choices I make? Or am I going to get to the end of my life and say, I did a lot of stuff, but not the stuff I should have been doing. I missed an opportunity to really live the life I was called to live. You have a vocation. It's a call from God. So do I. And our job, and I think this reading is calling us to it, is to say, all right, God gave me a particular direction in my life. He gave me a purpose. He has a plan for me. Now, I may think by keeping busy, I'm fulfilling his plan, but I'm not unless I discern. What does God want me to do with this life of mine? There are many, many choices for us, but unless we examine our choices and where they ultimately lead in terms of leading a meaningful life, we're not doing what we're called on by St. Paul when he says, watch carefully how you live. Basically, we go back to that thing I've said to you so many times before, what's in your wallet? What's in the choices you and I make every day to live our life? And are we living a life of meaning? And the only way to know that is to examine our life. What am I doing? Why am I doing it? Am I doing what God calls me to do? Do I recognize my vocation as a child of God? And am I living that vocation fully and well? And finally, 
that last gospel passage from John is all about the bread of life. You know, I mentioned to you at the outset that I spent some time in the hospital having surgery and recovery, but one of the things that was so illuminating for me is I'm lying in my hospital bed, and I've done this as a priest over 43 years, a million times, gone to visit the sick and given them the sacrament of the sick and, uh, and brought them communion and heard their confession. So I've done it for other people thousands of times. But this time, the guy in bed was me. And when Father Patrick, the chaplain, came in and said, would you like to receive communion? Would you like to be given the gift of the sacrament of the sick? I was no longer the one giving it. I was the one sharing in and receiving it. And I have to tell you, I've been receiving communion rites since I was seven years old. I don't think I've ever had a more emotional experience of receiving the body of Christ than I did lying pretty helpless in that hospital bed, depending on doctors and nurses and orderlies and all my friends and family who were supporting me. And the gift of God's body and blood in the sacrament gave me an uplift, uh, took my spirit and elevated it in a way I'd never known before. And I think this particular passage from John is saying there is a power to the Eucharist that I'm afraid over the course of our lives we take for granted and that we need to return, especially in this modern age, to recognizing and appreciating the unique and wonderful gift of God's self to us in his body and blood. And you know, one of the ways I know that we're not really appreciating it, certainly by the fact that in May we celebrate First Communion, you get to see the excitement in those children's eyes and faces who are receiving it for the first time. And then I watch regular people come up on Sunday and it's so often just going through the motions is that it's easy to get complacent about the awesome gift we're given. God himself, under the appearances of bread and wine, is coming to you and me to be received into our body, into our spirit. That is an awesome, amazing thing. And yet, let's be very, very honest. Let's be radically honest, because I know in my own family this is true too. When you can make Mass, you make Mass. When you can receive, you receive. But how many of us don't hear people say all the time, well, I'd go, I'd receive, but the kids have uh, Sunday morning sports. Or, you know, I, I probably get there once or twice a month, but the other days I'm busy. You know, we have vacations, we're going to this place or that. Now, when I was growing up, I remember that my parents, this is long before internet service was available, but if we were going to Massachusetts, New Hampshire, Maine, Washington, D.C., we'd check ahead of time to find out where there were Catholic churches so that for that one hour a week, we could get to Mass and receive the sacrament. Now, again, back then it was probably easy to make the same excuse. I'm busy, I'm on vacation, I'll go back to Mass when I get back to my parish. But all this to me is a sign that we become in some way complacent. I was complacent. I've given the body of Christ a million times, but now there I was in need of the body of Christ. And it made all the difference. I came to understand again the giftedness of what he celebrates in this Gospel reading. He gives us the bread of life and promises us through this that we will live forever, that we can be enlightened, that we can be uplifted, that the sadness of our lives, the anxiety of our lives can be elevated by the real presence of his body and blood. It's an awesome gift, but I don't want us ever to become so complacent that we take it for granted. When I get back to my parish, I'll receive. No, even those of you who are watching this Mass online, your parish will send somebody to your home. If you can't get out or get back to church, they'll send someone to your home regularly to bring you the body and blood of Christ. But never, ever should we take it for granted. And I confess that I think I did. Again, when you're in the business of religion, it's easy sometimes to just say, well, you know, you're receiving again and again. But you're receiving someone who is God himself. A final thought, I always say this when I talk about the Eucharist, and, and I, I thank you for being patient with me if you heard me say it a million times before, but um, I, I think for a lot of us, we still go through that um, kind of ancient conflict within ourselves of uh, who's supposed to receive communion. And, uh, you know, I was raised in a time when you had to be sinless, make sure you went to confession, did your Easter duty. And I'm often reminded, because I, I like the original translation, I don't necessarily think I'm a big fan of the new translation as much as I am the old. But before you receive communion in the older days, when I was being raised, O oh Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. What I'm saying is, I don't think any of us deserve the gift of the Eucharist. You know, you may be a saint, and if you are, God bless you and receive communion with that sense of, I, I deserve it. But for most of us, 
we're always painfully aware of our limits, our sinfulness, our incompleteness, how foolish we can be. So there's not a time when I've ever received communion when I'm not aware that who am I to be worthy of the Savior of the world coming to me personally in the form of bread and wine? And yet, he comes. Remember the Last Supper? Those guys were going to deny him, desert him, betray him. And they were all invited to the Last Supper to receive his body and blood, the First Communion. Didn't Jesus know they were all fools and that they wouldn't be there for him? Of course he did. So does Jesus only give Eucharist to those of us who deserve it, if there are a few of us who do, or is it given to us not because we ever deserve it, but because we deeply, profoundly need it? Oh Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed. I'm going to talk over the next few months, I hope, about this experience of being sick and operated on and trying to get well. But I wanted to just end, if I could, by saying one of the wonderful lessons I learned, especially in the hospital, was something I never knew before, which is the isolating power of illness. When your body doesn't do what it's supposed to do, when you find out you're facing something serious, and you've always taken life for granted, and you get up every day and you do what you want to do, and there are no limits, and suddenly there are limits. One of the feelings that I had, and maybe you've been in my shoes, is the great sense of isolation. Does anybody understand what I'm going through? Does anybody get how, at the end of the day, it's just you and me, your body, and whatever hope or sadness you bring to the experience? And I found, whether it was a doctor who took time to explain, or a nurse who was kind when I needed kindness, or an orderly who was there to simply bring me food but to talk for a while, or family or friends who reached out to me, or text messages or emails, that people caring when you are feeling isolated and you're unsure about where this illness is going to lead is such an amazing grace. So when people say to you that they're going through surgery or sickness or they're carrying the burden of illness, just recognize that one of the things they're not saying is illness of its very nature makes us feel so alone because we have to face this particular illness in the end on our own, we think. But the caring of other people, the love of other people, the blessings of other people, it can make all the difference in the world. And it certainly did that for me. Some of you wrote me while I was uh, busy getting well that you, uh, you, know, you were very happy for the priest that you had. So I want to say a word of thanks, too, that um, while I've been away, you had... Uh, uh, first, you had Father Andy do this Mass, and then you had Father Kevin, you had Father Anthony, you had Father Paulus, our visit from Ghana this summer, and last week you had Father Tom Brosnan. Now, Father Tom is a classmate of mine from the Diocese of Brooklyn. He took early retirement, so he's retired, but still doing wonderful work. But I'm just so grateful to them and to our deacons, Sal and Fred, for uh, literally covering for me my weddings, my baptisms, my funerals, my Masses, and allowing me to take time to get well, and I'm so grateful to them. But uh, a final lesson, if I can. Some of you said, you know, we also not only missed you, but we missed your pictures. So, you know me, I brought a picture, and, and I want you to enjoy this particular picture. So, um, so this picture is of two 27-year-old people. Remember last week, if you watched Mass, you had Father Tom Brosnan, my classmate. Well, this is Father Tom on this side, and that's yours truly on the other side. So this is taken, I guess when we were in the seminary, we were 27 years old. We're both priests for over 43 years, and you, look, you know what we look like now. But I mention that because Tom and I both have this picture, and for me now, it's a reminder. This feels like it was yesterday, but it wasn't. It was over 43 years ago. And that's how life goes, quickly. I guess what I'm saying is this illness and surgery and all the rest has helped me to realize that we don't know, do we, how much time we have and what's expected of us. And so since we don't know, we should live every day with a sense of, Lord, if you're calling me home today, I'm going to be not happy about it, but I'm going to be ready to go because I know that every single day is a gift and I will not waste a single, single day. It's a message for Tom and I, but it's a message for you and me too. Let's not waste a single day, but use every day as an opportunity to live fully, to celebrate life, and to be so grateful for the miracle of God's presence in our life. And now, as a people of faith, I'm going to ask you to join me in 
professing that faith in the words of our creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And with trust and hope and faith in the goodness of God, let's offer our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church will continue to proclaim the word, the word to the world, the invitation of Jesus to partake of the bread of life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That as God's people look forward to the resurrection on the last day, they may bring a new respect for human life into our laws and policies today, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. That as students conclude their summer vacations and resume their studies, they may grow in their love of knowledge and wisdom. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord in the presence of their loved ones, especially Patricia Valdero, Paulette Sewell, Peggy Folan, Kathy Ashford, Richard X, Kevin Bayer, Ingrid Bush, Robert Pillagy, Angela Natale, Catherine Maroney, Michael Nolan, James Demetra, Simona Heaton, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. Uh, for all those who have died, especially Dominic DeMango, Stephen A. Ferranti, Berta Lamas, Anne Marie Borzon, Dennis Donovan, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer. For the intention of this Mass, Anne and Frank Kurowski, the 50th wedding anniversary of Carol and Jim McGinn, Thomas McNamara, Rose Andre Aludor, Vincent Daniels, Anthony Toro, William Slezak, Bud Lekowitz, Luis Cataldi, and Doris Walls, whom we remember at this Eucharist, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And let me add a few intentions for those who are sick. I want to pray for my friend Diane Nagel down in the Carolinas, who has undergone some special surgery, and for her well-being and return to good health. Among the sick, I also pray for Jose Josena. I pray for Glenn Hudson, for Joe Falgiano, for Bertica of Seattle and her daughter as well, for Tom Slade and Kathy Bordingo, for Judge Anthony Falanga, for Eddie Mullins, and for Mary O'Brien, for Tommy Burke, my classmate and friend, for Tom and Patty Yanch, also classmates and friends. I pray for Katie O'Connor. I pray for Angelo and Al Clementi, for Leanne Lasanti, for Kimberly Cusack, for Christine Bauman. I pray for Michelle Leonhardt and Russell Castro Giovanni, for Vincent Rienza Jr., as well as uh, for Roy Citrano and Sam Maggio. I pray for Susie and Vinnie Vignardi and their families. I pray for Richard Monaco. I pray as well for Herb Stadler and Judy Alaco, and Larry Mayer. Pray for Richard Carbone. I pray for Janet Chevelle, Robert Talaska, Thomas Mistretta. Uh, I pray as well for Michael Hellam, and uh, Carmela, Catherine, and Liliana, the twins who have been sick. I pray for Michael, who's been battling leukemia. I pray for uh, Sandra Slater, and for Anne Marie de Blasio, and Linda Madrigo, and Dario Rivera. And I was praying for so long for Michael Chanover, and I heard this week that he has gone to God. I pray for Carol M. Uh, Carol Paolo Oshandi, for Kelly Lee Skibilia, and for Virginia Rivera. For Barbara and Ken Barsanti, 
Mary and Ken Johnson and family, Tommy Swingross. I pray for Sarah Belfi and Gus, I pray as well. Gus, you also went to God. I pray for Paulette Sewell and Terry and John Schiara and Maria and Bob Cariola. Pray for Melissa Olberg and Sal Manzo and Larry Lewis. I pray for the Parentine family and the McShay family as well, and for Velio Bronzini. Pray for Jack Campbell, as well as Mrs. Kalinowski and Linda and Frank Rosado. Among the sick, I pray as well for Ben Samanella, as well as George Rumi, and for Ralph as well. I want to pray, adding to the list of those who are sick, I pray too for uh, Howie Pomerantz, my friend Howie. Uh, Josephine Romano, I pray for Rita Padden, I pray for uh, Richard Arturo, I pray as well for uh, Valerie Milderberger and her continued recovery, my friend Frank Savino, I pray too for Vinnie Rissuti, I just had a chance to visit Vinnie this week in the nursing home, I pray too for uh, Leanne Lasanti again, and also among the sick let me pray for Melanie Jandovitz as well as Josephine Romano. And then I want to pray for those who have passed away. So let me mention them now. Richard Jennings, Craig Scott, Bessie and TC Center, Thomas Minter, Roland Rossi. I pray for Jenna Tuller, Margie Smith, Tessie Palmo. I pray for Phil Corderaro and Frank Cazetto. I pray for Isabella Glauda, Billy and Michael Sarasoli and their father, Billy Sarasoli. I pray for Ray and Monica Carrison. Pray for Margaret O'Connor Lasanti and Bridget Clementi, especially on this, the one year anniversary of Bridget's passing, a great old friend who first made me welcome in her home along with Angelo when I was a newly ordained priest. As always, I pray for my mom, Cecilia Nicholas Lasanti. I pray for Irene and Tom Romano, for Ed June and Eddie Jandovitz, and for Beverly Maggio. I pray too for Regina Brighton, Justino Amarin. I pray for Tom Sully O'Sullivan and Alfred John Sicali. I pray for Emilio Olaco and Paul Struzzieri and Maria and Albert Cavelli, for Anna and Gary Gooms, for all the deceased members of the Vignardi family, for Diana Mestretta, as well as James and Rita Volpe. I pray for Joseph Sardone, for Gina Pelletier, for Emily Lafaso. I pray for um, Jim Bobrowski, as well as Chris Baumler. I pray for Betty Moore and Pauline Romano and Sylvia Christ, as well as Beatrice Ferrari. Pray for Millie Paradiso and Mary Rockensees, for James C. Williams, as well as Suzanne Scanio and Brian Hussey, her dad, for Annette Salintro and Judge Donald Belfi and Thomas Peter Lopresti, for Joseph Walweber and Dennis and Joe Cooney, for Richard Jennings and Jamie Scotto and Pam Amadeo, as well as Gina Pelletier, Beatrice Ferrari, Chris Baumler once again. I pray for Pauline McKenzie's parents as well as Jeanette Chanover and Rosalie Salco and for Gussie Sino. Let me pray for Sino. I want to pray for John, Helen, and Luke Marr. In addition to all those that I mentioned from my famous book that you just listened to, I want to add some that have come to my attention since I was last here for Mass. And among the sick, I want to pray in a special way for Stephanie Reale Handelson. Uh, I did the wedding for her and her husband, Howie, many years ago and they're both facing illness. Howie's been dealing with MS for many years, over 25 years, but now Stephanie, his very devoted wife, is battling serious cancer. So Howie and Stephanie, I just want you to know that we're sending love and prayers for both of your well-being. Tom and Kathy Forbes, he's a, a deacon and she's a great wife and mother. They, they have been a regular presence at Our Lady of Lourdes for many years and they're both now in assisted living and dealing with their own illnesses. So Tom and Kathy Forbes, sending you love and prayers. Vinny Rasuti, I'm praying for you again, and Anthony Lusich, and Bill DeVito, and Howie Pomerantz, and Josephine Romano, and Diane Nagel. And then among those who have died, I want to add to the list of those I already mentioned, Hilda Brady, and uh, Marie McCarthy, and uh, Dennis Buckley. Uh, you know Joan, his wife, who has read for us so many times at this Mass, and Dennis passed away today. I remember my good friend John Kearns. Uh, a wonderful waiter at One If By Land, Two If By Sea in New York, uh, and a great friend from Rockville Center. Young John went home to God. Dr. Keith uh, Zwingelbeck, Zwingelbeck, yes. All right, Dr. Keith, praying for you too and your happiness in heaven. Rocco Balzano, I pray for you. Doris Wells, 
and uh, also Sandy Anzalone, Tony Falanga, and Ralph Woythaler, and Sister Mary Ann Ambrose, a wonderful Josephite sister who went home to God recently, and Emily Lafaso and Christine Formato, and Joe Monaco, and Suzanne Scanio, and all the people. I'm sure there are many more when I go through my mail that I'll find. I also want to keep on praying for peace in our world. I want an end to the violence taking place in Ukraine for them to be free and, uh, and for them to live with the true democracy that they seek. I pray as always for the freedom of our friends in Taiwan and Hong Kong. I pray for an end to all the violence going on in the Middle East, that the Holy Land might be truly holy again because it's truly a place in which peace reigns. I want to pray for all those doctors and nurses and orderlies who I benefited from, and so do you, if you've ever had to face illness. I want to pray, too, for all our first responders, our police, our firefighters, our EMTs. I want to pray for all of our men and women in the military who keep us free by their willingness to put themselves in the line for us and for all your special intentions in mind, that we give them over now to the Mother of God, our patroness, and in prayer we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. Lord God, accept our sacrifice as a holy exchange of gifts, and by offering what you have given us, may we receive the gift of you yourself, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, who is our brother and our Lord. He is the word through whom you made the universe. He's the savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the joy and glory of resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will, and he won for you a holy people. So now, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we proclaim your glory as together we say. praise you through your Son, Jesus Christ, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation. He is the hand you stretch out to us who are sinners. He is the way that leads to your peace. God, our Heavenly Father, we've often wandered far from you, but through your Son, Jesus, you have brought us back. You gave him up to death so that we might turn again to you and find our way in love to one another. Therefore, we celebrate today the love and reconciliation of Christ. And we ask you, Father, to send forth the power of your Spirit so that they may become for us these gifts, the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. (coughs) 
while he was at supper on the night before he died for us, <coughs> Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. Proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come, until you come again. Lord our God, your Son has entrusted to us this pledge of his love. We celebrate the memory of his death and resurrection, and we bring you the gift you've given to us the sacrifice of love and reconciliation. Therefore, we ask you, Father, to accept us together with your Son. Fill us with his Spirit through our sharing in this meal, and may he take away all that divides us. May the same Spirit keep us always in communion of mind and heart with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. Father, make your church throughout the world a sign of unity and an instrument of your peace. You've gathered us here today around the table of your son in fellowship with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with Saint Joseph, and with Mary, the Mother of Jesus, and all the saints. In that new world where the fullness of your peace will be revealed, gather people of every race, every language, every way of life to share in the one eternal banquet with Jesus Christ, who is our risen and our loving Lord. For it is through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. When we pray the Lord's Prayer today, why don't we make that prayer, especially for everyone who has felt or is feeling right now, the isolation of illness, whether that's physical or emotional. So many hurting people all around us who need people like you and me to reach out and to care. And in particular, I'm, I'm praying for today, uh, Father Mike Reed was a wonderful, wonderful priest of our diocese who just went home to God after so many years of service. But he worked for literally decades in A. Holly Patterson nursing home, being there for all those people who were sick or broken in body, mind, or spirit. Whenever people reach out to those in pain, it's truly a graced moment. So let's pray for more people to be able to do that, including you and me. Let's do that by praying the Lord's Prayer for everyone who bothers to care for those who are in need, those who are sick, those who face the isolation of illness. Let's hope that every one of us responds to that call as together we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety, as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let's share that peace with one another. Take away the sins of the world. 
world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and the blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Let's say our prayer of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. Um, you probably can see if you want to by going online, this is the parish bulletin. And it's really good and it's, it's a new website, so please think about that. But one of the things that we're doing in the parish this week is that we're uh, having a special collection for uh, a cause very close to Father Andy's heart. You know Father Andy's now visiting the Philippines and he'll be back at the end of August. But the seminary, the minor seminary where he helped to train young men who became priests later on, that seminary recently burned down and Father Andy has been visiting the site of the terrible fire. So now those seminarians are being sent to the major seminary to be trained. But I mention that because of course they hope to rebuild that seminary. The Philippines is a wonderful source of priestly vocations for the whole world. So we're gonna have here at Our Lady of Lourdes a collection and send it off to the Philippines in hopes of helping them rebuild the seminary for young men who have a, a desire to serve the world and the church as priests. So we'll do it here at Our Lady of Lourdes in the, all the Sunday Masses, but if you feel, especially if you happen to be someone who watches daily Mass and is very familiar with the service of Father Andy and all the priests from the Philippines who help us, yeah, you're welcome to please think about making a donation. Just write a check to Our Lady of Lourdes and in the, the little place for a memo, put down this is for the seminary and we'll know that we have to get your particular donation to the seminary in the Philippines so they can rebuild after this horrible fire and there can be another seminary for those young men who want to serve the church. So uh, I know this is not a particularly poor, uh, not a particularly rich area of the world, this particular diocese in the Philippines and every American dollar can help so much to build that school for future priests. So if you want to join us in raising money, we're doing it this coming weekend and you just send it to Our Lady Lords, and, uh, and again, in the corner, put seminary, and we'll know exactly what that's for. And uh, then I wanted to mention, too, what did I want to mention? A couple of things. Oh, always, you know, I like to, I'm back to pushing, personally speaking, with Monsignor Jim Lusanti. I mentioned to you it's on Sirius XM three times on Sunday, the Catholic Channel 129, but you just go to your computer, and under the heading, you type in, personally speaking, uh, on the YouTube, and you'll find all our shows this week. An encore performance, we're uh, playing again our interview with Patty Davis, the 
the daughter of Ronald and Nancy Reagan. And I think it's a great interview because how many people have regrets about the way in which they did or did not get along with their parents? And she's written a book called Dear Mom and Dad, and she talks about all the things she should have done, they should have done, to make it a more loving relationship. And now later in life, she's coming to peace with the conflict. So it's a powerful interview with Patty Davis, President Reagan's daughter. And then next week, a great guy, Rob Schmidt. He's an anchor at Newsmax. And boy, does he talk straight about some of the issues facing our country, and especially in short order as we're facing a national election. It's great to hear a guy who's trying to be objective about some of the issues we face. So Rob Schmidt, wonderful anchor who's been with ABC, CBS, NBC, as well as Fox News before, now with Newsmax, talking about some of the issues of our day. So this week, uh, Patty Davis, the child of Nancy and Ronald Reagan. Next week, uh, Rob Schmidt from Newsmax. But please join us on Personally Speaking. And uh, I think that's it for now. And it's just so good to be back with you. And thanks to all of you for your prayers and your support and your love, which meant everything to me. Let's pray. God of tenderness, God of mercy, by this holy sacrament, you make us one with Jesus Christ. By becoming more like him on earth, may we come to share in the glory one day of heaven, where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. With your spirit. And may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Amen. Thanks be to God. Jesus Christ, our sovereign King, who is the world's salvation, for praise and homage to me bring, and thanks and adoration. Christ Jesus, victor, Christ Jesus, ruler, Christ Jesus, Lord, and repeat.